So the results looked a lot better than last time. Was this the summer of sunscreen? What did you see? Yeah, Sarah, they were sequentially better than what we were last quarter. And I think what you, you saw in the market today and the reaction is um, the, the, the categories we play in are getting a little better and our relative performance in those categories is better. And so it, not only did we beat expectations on top and bottom line, we were actually even a little better than our internal projection. And it, it, it's pretty varied in terms of what's driven that result. Obviously, the demand for personal hygiene products is very high. Our wet ones business was up 85% in the quarter. That obviously drove the results. Um, our sun care business continued to perform well. And interestingly enough, while, while shaving overall remains challenged, the category improved versus the last quarter, down 6% versus down 10 uh, two quarters ago. And our women's business actually returned to growth. And so what we saw is women were shaving at about the same rate they did last year. So do you tie that to the fact, Rob, that we did see economies reopen and, and people start to emerge about their daily lives? Or, and, and, and therefore, is it a risk that we're seeing the second wave and, and potentially more restrictions across the country? Yeah, I, I do think it was the, a summer that, that people figured out how to be outside. Um, and then it was a later summer where the, the use of sunscreen, for example, was heavier in the back half of the year. And so people figured out how to get whatever their normal was uh, back into the routine a little bit. And on shaving, as, you know, as women became, um, you know, figured out how to be outside, you also saw them shave at more normal rates. Uh, guys are still shaving less. That is the case. And so as we go back into the, the next couple of quarters here into the middle of the winter, for, for us from a sun care perspective, it's not a huge problem because that's not the peak of the season. That, that would happen in the spring other than in the southern cone and, and Australia, New Zealand. Um, and so I think as, as we look at it, the shaving incident rate, women's is also cyclical. Um, that's not a heavy you know, cycle in the winter. It's more in the spring and summer months. And so as we look at what's, what's to come in the next couple of, of months, we actually are quite pessimistic that the trends will improve um, over the next couple of months. And that's how we planned our business uh, going into the new start of the year for us here. T -t Talk to me more about what you mean, wh where you're more conservative or pessimistic about, about where the trends are. Because so many of your competitors, like a P&G, are seeing such strength as people remain at home. So, so talk to us a little bit about how it's different for you. Yeah, it's, it's the product mix primarily. And, and so, as, as you know, and you, you said in the opening, we have a big exposure to wet shave um, and shaving in general. And uh, the shaving incident rates for guys is down until we get back into a more normal environment of people getting back to the workplace. Um, that's going to be challenged. And so that's, that's our biggest challenge. Beyond that, actually, we're quite optimistic. If you look at grooming, um, and, and how guys are taking care of themselves. What we're finding is the, the grooming segment continues to grow and boom. There's more at home happening. That's the case on the women's side as well. And so we're seeing two examples on, on guys' side. There's more men putting more products into their daily regimen as they take care of themselves with self-care at home. And on the, on the women's side, in addition to, to shaving the legs, for example, there's other zones where women are becoming more active on the face, for example, with dermaplaning. And we launched a new product. We had the product out there, but we repositioned it. It's called Hydro Silk Touch, where the campaign is um, brows of the new lips. And in an, in an environment where people are masked and you can't see the lips and face, you get the expression from the eyes and the eyebrows. And so we've, we've launched a tool and put a campaign around helping women shape their brows. Is really, is that a big market? So women now using the kind of razors or, or blades that they would on their face, specifically on their eyes, because they're wearing masks. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's around, it's, it's, it's facial dermaplaning is a growing trend anyway. And the repositioning of that around shaping brows, again, more in an at-home environment, if you have someone who may typically do that in a salon. Um, I'll give you a stat, it's, it's quite interesting. That Hydra Silk Touch-Up product was the number two product across all personal care on Amazon last quarter. Hmm. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.